This is going to be a small explainer video on the L1 and R1 situation on Odin. This is not something that I expect a lot of people to care about, so that's why I'm going to throw it up on Taki 2. But I'm going to explain in this video basically everything that you need to know to understand the situation completely. I mentioned this in my teardown video, but the switch is a good example to reference. So if we look at the switch design, they basically have a similar shoulder button layout, except they have this guardrail on the front shell that stops the button from going down. This rail stops you from being able to break the switch, the switch being this down here. Now the switch's mechanism is a plastic piece with no rubber. The rubber is on the switch itself. Odin is a different situation. Now on Odin, they have a plastic button with a plastic cylinder in the center of the button surrounded by a piece of rubber. This piece of rubber goes around a post and that post presses against the switch. The rubber cover acts as a dampener and it kind of mimics the feel of the switch's trigger buttons, but I think that this switch is not as good as the rubber one used in the switch. So let's talk about where the issue arises. When you press down on this button, the rubber piece on the inside applies some pressure on the top of the switch and it makes a clicking noise. The problem is, there's nothing stopping you from continuing to apply pressure to this button. As I said before, I think some people had this switch broken from the factory because it wasn't tested correctly, but others can probably break this from excessive force. Now, if you're one of the unlucky few that have a broken L1 or R1 button, I honestly think that you should have already had a kit sent to you using the exact same parts that are being used today to manufacture Odin devices. The likelihood that you could break the switch with this design is already very low, so the likelihood that you would be able to break it on a repair kit is even lower. Even if you somehow broke the repair kit that was sent to you, at least you'd be able to use a working button for a while while AYN works on a better solution. So let's talk about the solution that they made. Now I'm going to explain this how it was explained to me. The idea was that they would continue to use this design for all of the Odin devices going forward. They would make a separate design that would be used only for a repair kit. With the goal of making a repair kit that is easy to use, they only had a few components that they were willing to change. Ideally, the best solution that they could ever do would be to modify the front shell and add this guardrail here so you would never be able to break the switch again. The issue with that is that it makes the entire repair a lot more complicated than it needs to be. So they deliberated for a while and they came up with this solution. Inside this switch in the middle is a post. On this new design, they made the internal post shorter and they made the rubber piece that goes over it larger. On its face, that seems like a reasonable change. If you were getting a repair kit, you would essentially only need to replace this one piece, which is pretty easy to do. Unfortunately, it doesn't end up working out that well. So let's go over the typical behavior that you would expect from a shoulder button. After you press and hear the click, you don't expect to be able to go down any further than this. You have a stiff resistance at the final resting position. On the new design that they worked on, that is not the case. Because they changed the rubber piece to be bigger, that means it also has more room to squish than it did before. If we take a look at the new design, after the click happens, your finger can continue to press down because that rubber piece is larger. Even if you only press the button lightly, you still notice that something feels strange because the button is not being stopped from continuing to move down into the slot. This new situation is actually very easy to understand. The added travel length that this button has after it clicks is the direct result of the increased area of the rubber piece on the inside. Here's how it is on the retail device if I press as hard as I can, and here's how it is on the new solution. Now obviously this is an extreme case, but I'm doing this because it's easier for you to understand how the button is actually working. Now the issues with this new design are mostly in feeling, so if I only press this lightly, you would never know how strange this button is. That's the reason why I am exaggerating it by pressing it as much as it can go so you can understand what is happening. So in my opinion, this is not an acceptable design to replace the original button. Now we get into some issues. Now if you recall earlier, I mentioned that the best way to fix this problem is to modify the front shell. The problem is, anybody that already has a device wouldn't benefit from that change unless they swapped out the entire front shell of their unit, and that is not going to happen. Unfortunately, AYN has made changes to the front shell. This is a very minor change, but on the back of this switch, they added a piece of plastic to stop the switch from being able to be forced back and break off the PCB. 
Batch 1 Odins do not have this guard in place. So if you can't modify the front shell, or you shouldn't modify the front shell so that way everybody has the exact same quality of device, the next thing that you are left with is modifying another component. There's another piece that got modified in all of this that actually is a better candidate for solving the entire problem. The L2 and R2 hall sensor is located right here. Here's a look at the L2 button. You can see the magnet on the inside of the back cover. As this magnet gets closer to this sensor, the analog value increases. Now this magnet is attached to this piece here, and as you can see, there's a hole in the center around the hall sensor. They found a few cases where this hall sensor could break off the board from repeated contact with this piece of plastic. So as a quick solution to this problem, they decided to increase the size of this hole so that we would never come in contact with the hall sensor. Unlike the new button design, this change has no negative impact on the usability of the device. If your ultimate goal is to achieve something similar to what Nintendo has with this shelf that stops the button from going down further, and you've already failed at doing it on the button itself, your next best option, if you already have to modify this piece anyways, is to add the shelf to this. It might be a bit hard to see, but I'm going to try and illustrate the change that I proposed. Interestingly enough, the part of this housing that clips onto L2 is at the perfect height to make a shelf to stop the L1 button from being able to break the switch from the PCB. Essentially what you'd be doing is creating a safety guardrail from this back piece to stop the L1 button from being able to go down further than it should. Because this component already benefits from a modification to protect the long-term use of the L2 and R2 sensor, it's a perfect candidate for this repair solution. For those that need a repair kit, they would only need to replace this piece and the controller board itself if the switch was broken. For future manufacturing, they would only need to modify this one piece. This small change ensures that all Odins use the exact same shells, so no one has a better product than anyone else, depending on when they ordered. They have said that they will add a guardrail to this piece in their latest IgG post, but I think it's a lot smaller than it should be, so I don't know how well it will work. The unfortunate part about all of this is they've already modified this button, and they've made it worse in my opinion. I'll do a recording in just a moment, but this new button makes a lot more noise than the old one did. The second unfortunate thing is that they went against their original goal of not making any modifications to the shell of Odin by making modifications to the shell of Odin. This means that there's a clear and meaningful difference between the Batch 1 Odins and the Batch 2 Odins that have yet to be produced. As promised, here's a sound recording of the old versus the new shoulder buttons. Here are the old buttons. And here are the new ones. The best explanation that I can give from hearing these in person is that the old buttons had a muffled sound to them and the new buttons are louder. Hopefully this video answers any questions that you had about the L1 and R1 button situation on Odin.